Thank you for joining me uh, at this uh, Volunteer Service Awards 2018 nomination application workshop. We are recording this event so we can share it with others who may just be on different schedules. So I just want to welcome everybody to be here today. Um, I'm Susan Sano. I am the Special Projects Manager at Volunteer Fairfax. That means um, I do just a little bit of a lot of different things. And one of the things that they've asked me to do this year is to um, uh, put together this workshop to help people understand some of the, the benefits, the ins and outs, and as uh, you had pointed out, some of the magic behind the selection process. Um, I am wearing bunny slippers right now, just like in the picture. Very cute. Yeah, thank you. Um, so a little bit about the history. We've been doing the, the Volunteer Service Awards for 26 years. Um, in 2018, there are 14 competitive awards, four benchmark awards, and we typically get about 200 nominations per year. Um, that was that number was new to me. I, I really had no idea as somebody just hearing about the program and uh, the awards will be, re be presented this year at our at the volunteer Fairfax annual service awards breakfast and that's set for Friday April 27th 2018 um, April is national volunteer month there's also the national volunteer week I think it's the week before we specifically do not put our event in that week so so many other organizations, Hundreds uh, in this area are are celebrating, and we want to be able to let your your programs be uh, spotlighted, and then we do our program the following week this year. So a, a place to start is why do you want to make a nomination that will help you in your writing and your motivation and your content development? You may be looking to honor somebody, to thank somebody, to recruit future volunteers. If you want to be known as we are a winning organization, people like to be associated with winners. You may want to retain current volunteers as a way to say thank you. Um, for those who that are super competitive, um, it's all about winning. And then there's that short straw. I was told to fill this thing out. When do I have to get it in? And I'll, you know, do fill it out quickly. And so look at what you're your your motivation is in nominating and it will help you in developing content. So writing a nomination, you can nominate somebody else. Self nominations are always welcome. Um, sometimes people write nominations without the nominee knowing about it. There's a couple pros and cons to either of these uh, methods. Uh, you can write an, a nomination and write down everything you know, or you can collect information from whole bunches of people, including the nominator themselves. It can be more correct, maybe more current, maybe something that you don't know that they, a motivator that they just never talk about, a commitment to your organization, a reason why they are they have stepped forward so strongly in, as a volunteer in your organization. So know that both are welcome. There's lots of pros and cons and just figure out um, what the nominee might be able to help you that you may not know on your own. So there are some benefits of nominating um, to several different audiences. To the nominee itself, I think it would be great to say for somebody to say to me, you have uh, made a difference. We recognize you. We we thank you. But we we think you do such great work. We're looking for recognition not only by just our organization, just by our own animal shelter, but we want to shout it out to the rest of the community. We want lots of people to know about this. And the benefits to you as your organization, um, people will recognize that you have a um, outstanding volunteer program, your uh, volunteers impact, they succeed, they thrive. They can be uh, used uh, to help future volunteers, recruit future volunteers. We have winning volunteers, we have people who have done, um, and then you can repeat what you've written on this application. And it reminds others within your organization, other uh, staff people, other volunteers, board members, that volunteers make a great impact in your organization. 
and for you to take the step forward, you really can make a difference, the satisfaction that you've chosen to thank, honor, and spotlight an excellent volunteer. Um, we go to, when we do our volunteer experience, we go and we do our work. We don't know that there's a higher level, a higher plane where you can honor somebody and to so many volunteers say to us, oh, we don't want any thanks, but it's amazing when they are thanked at such a high level. So a little bit about the process that we're, you know, you're in the midst of right now. You can determine whether or not you're eligible. Um, you certainly are, uh, being in Fairfax County. Um, you determine what categories are right for you and the nominee. You look at the nomination form, um, the number of questions you have to answer, um, how are you going to get those question answers, setting some strategy. You look at the questions. Um, I was looking at them last night as I was preparing for today. And, you know, I thought to myself, it's really interesting. There's about five solid questions that need thought. There's lots of questions that are just data and, you know, just submitting that kind of basic information. But how are you going to get those key questions answered? You see what the submission deadline is and then you get ready for the breakfast. So even though you have um, made a nomination, that's not the end of the work that you need to do. So we'll talk a little bit more about that today. So who is eligible? This is very important um, in that it, we're talking, we're looking at volunteer impact. And that volunteer impact can be anywhere in the Fairfax area, which includes Fairfax County, Fairfax City, Towns of Vienna, Oakton, Clifton, Herndon, Falls Church. If there's a question about any uh, of your uh, possible nominations and you're wondering about um, the geography, let us know if there's a question. Um, the residence requirements, there, there is none. You do not have to be a resident of Fairfax County or Fairfax area. It's about where the volunteer service occurred and is impacting the community. So if you have somebody perhaps in uh, who lives in Loudoun but comes to your shelter every single day and you want to nominate them, they can be nominated. So we want to be real clear on that. In this program, nominees can be individuals, groups, families, corporations, nonprofits. There's a lot of different categories. Um, and here are the lists. So we're looking at uh, ways to honor adults, youth, seniors, corporations, families, um, members of the county government are, are uh, welcome. We have our youth volunteer, the rising star, and the, the category that always makes me cry because it's so emotional, the Lifetime Achievement Awards. So those are the competitive awards where we have the selection committee pick amongst the, this group per category. The benchmark awards, if you nominate somebody for a benchmark award, they will win because you are telling us that they have reached certain pinnacles and number of hours granted. So if you have an adult volunteer, you just have to let us know which category and they will be honored at the Volunteer Service Award breakfast. There's a youth benchmark award as well. Again, uh, if you um, nominate them, they will be honored. There's also an RSVP benchmark pro program that's for senior um, senior volunteers, it's calculated internally by the RSVP program, so we don't take nominations in that category. But you can nominate somebody for a volunteer, adult volunteer award. Any questions on the categories? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> uh, Karen had a question on the RSVP benchmark. If you could explain what RSVP is. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. RSVP is our senior volunteering program for 55 and better. Um, it's a specific program run by Volunteer Fairfax, Volunteer Arlington, and Volunteer Alexandria. So I wanted to include that to let you know that it exists. If you are not part of that program, it doesn't apply to you. But I just want to let you know. Another question. Um, how many can we nominate for the benchmark? You can nominate as many as you want. The first three are free. Anything over that? you will be charged $35 okay. per person. We'll talk Thank about you. that a little bit later on. So the place to start your application process is going to the Volunteer Fairfax webpage. 
Um, I showed you pictures of what our the first page is on the left, um, you know, 20, 26th annual volunteer service awards you just click on that area and it takes you to um uh the next page which is the one on the right and you just hit submit a nomination and you can start the process there. so it is very easy to begin let me just go and and immediately go to some hints and tips and realities of how the process works when you go to the web page, I recommend that you download the nomination template. And it's very um, obvious they give you uh, opportunities to, to say, here's where you can download the competitive award. You, I recommend, I strongly recommend that you um, complete the answers offline. Sorry about the phone. I don't know if anybody's <laughs> going to get it here. <laughs> um, so complete the answers offline. Um, so you can load in the responses at once. There's no save button. There's no save option. So if you go and start your nomination form and leave it, you're going to lose all the information. So offline. Uh, individuals and groups can be nominated for one competitive award, but individuals can be nominated for one benchmark award. And individuals can be nominated for both a competitive and a benchmark award. So let's say you're one of your favorite volunteers puts in 500 hours a year at the shelter, so they're qualified for the benchmark award, but you also want them to have an outstanding adult volunteer award uh, category. You can do both. And as I mentioned before, um, you can nominate up to three benchmark nominees at no cost. Uh, additional benchmarks are $35 each. Just go ahead and submit them and we will invoice your organization. Have pictures ready for upload. Um, those might be difficult unless you keep some on file, you go through your records, pick out which ones you want. They will be used during the presentation. So don't just you know throw anything in. You know, give us your best stuff and your uh, highest resolution. I think it's 300 DPI is recommended. And we also ask you for quotes from your executive director or uh, director of volunteers, whoever is, um, who, whoever you opt to, to have quote. Think about these quotes. They're not a throwaway. They are used during the presentation. And uh, something um, personal or, you know, about that individual is very, um, is gr we're grateful to receive as opposed to, we love our volunteers, which can be useful for anybody. <laughs> Susan, so, another question on that. Sure. The uh, competitive, or is it the same three, you can nominate three from your organization? For the benchmark awards. What about competitive? Um, competitive, and I'm going to turn to Jessica, who's who helps with this program. It, you can... You can nominate many, several. Yep, that's absolutely correct. And so the competitive nomination is far more comprehensive. And so our thinking is that people won't take, uh, people don't have the time to be able to write so many nominations. If, if for some reason something changes, this may change in the future. But for now, um, only, like Susan said, one individual can only be nominated for one competitive category. You can't nominate one person for in two categories with okay. the same nomination or with a similar nomination, but you can nominate different individual people for different individual competitive categories or nominate a couple people in the same category. Okay. Um, what if I submitted someone last year for competitive and continued their excellent volunteer service, I can nominate them again this year? Absolutely. Okay. And we like that. Sometimes um, I have found in my experience of running awards programs, sometimes the person is not quite ready or maybe needs to have a few more um, uh, achievements to be to be in the winning category. Plus, remember the competition changes every year. It's right. not that the, 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 it's, the winners are chosen from the nominees and the number of nominees and the, the breadth and depth and achievements of those volunteers could change every year. So. Yeah. And and the selection committee changes. So nobody on the selection committee is going to say, hey, I saw this person last year and we didn't pick them. It's going to be, oh, let's consider this person each time. So okay. fine, no problem. 
do you find this is curious, do you find that there are some categories under competitive that tend to get many more nominations than other categories? Oops, sorry, I'm going the wrong way. I'm trying to find the categories. Susan, I can go ahead and take that. Yes, please. Um, the, the, the answer is absolutely. And truly, it changes year by year. For example, uh, last year, our senior volunteer category had 25 to 30 nominations, and we've never seen anywhere near that amount. Um, so we don't, there's not a formula for it. There's no rhyme or reason. And it, it truly surprises us every time we go to review the nomination. Okay, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Then uh, competitive categories are they defined in the um, when you get to the website is the category defined like is lifetime achievement defined so that you would understand how that would be different from I mean it's obviously almost the title makes it different but from rising star for example or adult volunteer group yes I'll not take this one too um, there are there is an eligibility guidelines um, okay. on the web page that you'll be able to download that details in a couple sentences what the requirements of each category are and if you have any questions or want further clarification um, feel free to give us a call and we can talk through it okay are we good on categories yes, yes. okay excellent let me go back go forward so let's talk about what makes a winning application a winning application um, it's all about making sure that you're talking about the impact of the Fairfax community. Um, it's, it's, so, and the community is defined earlier about the Fairfax County, Fairfax City, and then the, the, the towns are named. Um, tell, it, this is all about storytelling, and you need to talk about um, ways that, in, that you can prove your impact, whether it's to that individual volunteer is part of the story, how um, he or she has impacted uh, the clients, in your case, the animals and the adopting families perhaps, um, how it's impacted the organization as a whole, and then how um, their volunteerism is impacting the, that larger community. So you have lots of different ways to talk about what has happened for that uh, nominee. Um, addressing benefits, outcomes, impacts. We love numbers. Um, if that's to me is the most magical tip of this entire presentation is the importance of data and numbers to be able to express that, whether it's in hours um, given to the organization, um, people they've trained, uh, animals they've gotten adopted, uh, you know, cages they've cleaned out in a day, anything that you can uh, talk about their impact with numbers is a great help. Um, don't assume everybody knows what it's like to um, run an animal shelter. You have to give context, give an explanation that, you know, uh, cleaning out cages, not always the, the best thing, the, the uh, most liked task, but the volunteers who come in and are willing to do that as part of their volunteer experience, you appreciate because it's a tough job. It's a dirty job. It's a necessary job. Talking about before and after somebody volunteered, before you, need, you needed somebody who could develop a volunteer manual, and this person was able to do that, and now you're able to um, uh, bring in uh, more volunteer, more new volunteers each month, and that maintains your um, the number of volunteers you need to have on a monthly basis. Assume the judges know nothing about your organization. Um, sometimes people are so close they forget that they don't that the that the um, that they, that they know something about your organization. Assume they know nothing and always write about that. So we're talking about context as well as details of running an animal shelter in your case. And correct spelling really does make a difference. When you're reading hundreds of applications, um, you start tossing aside ones that it's like, well, they didn't really put in any time. It, this isn't uh, well thought out. And they can't even spell their, their organization name correctly. It really can make a difference. And then what are some of the most common errors, how an application can miss the mark? Um, I'm going to be repetitive, but we're really trying to drill this home. Assume the judges know you, your nominee, and your organization. 
that is such an error. They know nothing. Just ex make sure that you put in that added line of, you know, clarifying information, cleaning out cages, not a popular task. This person comes in and cleans out their 15 cages each shift, and it's so exciting to see them be so happy about this. And Dan has uh, adopted two animals or something about that. Um, I talk about the twos, an application that's too narrow, too vague, too much jargon, too much alphabet soup, all very negative. Uh, making sure that um, that people are specific in what they're doing, but are not saying this is what happens in this shift. It's this is what happens at the um, shelter itself. This is what happens within the organization itself. We've talked about the importance of numbers. We're looking for numbers of people, measures, number of volunteer hours. There's no proof that this person is making an impact. And then uh, applications that are obviously written quickly. And we're going to look at a couple of sample responses. So the one of the key questions is please give a description of the service the nominee provided for the organization. On the right side is the weakest answer, and this is from a real application, that the person is an integral part of the organization's program. Well, that doesn't tell us anything. On the strong side, on the left side of the screen, you know, they talk about that they've served the organization for 30 years, served as board chair, um, given 1,700 hours, and uh, 8,000 to other organizations, county organizations. This is for a lifetime achievement, but still, it was really written well. Um, was inspired by her mom to leave this world a better place. I love knowing the motivation of um, of the nominee, the reason why they um, come to your org office every day. Um, it can be to leave the world a better place. It can be social interaction. I live by myself. Um, I want to give back. I love animals. I've been a dog owner for my entire life. That kind of thing. It, it gives people context and lets the reader understand the motivation. And in this application, they talked about all the different kinds of service, kinds of volunteer service the individual has given, whether it's management, strategic planning, worked in all social programs, does outreach, is just our best ambassador. So what a difference it makes. Another question, please tell us why this nominee should receive this award. The weak side on the right, the nominee deserves the award because he, he loves volunteering. He comes in every day with a smile. He loves volunteering. He loves our organization. He loves volunteering. As opposed to the person on the left side, this nominee has been instrumental building and managing small teams of volunteers. He helped uh, shape the program. He um, does training. He mentors. He donated 336 hours in 2017 and has allowed our community to and name two or three achievements. What a difference as opposed to he loves volunteering. We know that the people are loving volunteering, but it, the, the right side didn't tell us anything and the left side told us lots. So a little bit again, make your nomination count. Uh, describe, a, describe the service. Um, always are, are you answering who, what, where, when, why, how, you know, how was the organization? Um, how was the organization not, um, impacted by the volunteer service? Spelling counts, numbers, numbers, numbers. Um, one of our inside hints on this is sometimes when we're reading some very strong applications, the committee will go for a tiebreaker and they're looking at numbers, something that they compare apples to apples. So one person has given you know, 1,400 hours in the past five years and the other person has given 30 that helps define who the winner should be. If there's any tip I can give you today, the number one I, tip I share is after you write the application, have somebody who may or may not um, know the individual. Have them read the application. Are you using too much jargon? Is there too much inside information? Are they really expressing the uh, breadth and depth of this of this individual and the impact they're making, are you giving them a fair explanation? So have a fresh set of eyes. And again, those two 
high resolution photos, we recommend 300 DPI if they're um, on the computer, and uh, that's a way to figure out if that if they will replicate um, to our use to our other uses um, in the future. The deadline. Um, today is January, I think, 11th. Yay. The nomination is uh, due at 5 o'clock on Thursday, February 1st, and that's a firm deadline. So, you know, now is the time to download that application and set a strategy, a calendar of how you're going to get things done, when you're going to get it done, who's going to read it, who's going to reread it. If you need to do any interviews with any other volunteers, if you want to do some interviews of uh, some people who have worked with the individual, uh, your board chair, your, you know, anybody who think could give you input, now is the time to start that work. The selection committee includes people from nonprofits, government, business, uh, volunteer program managers, and my very favorite are people who have gone through this process and were selected as past winners. We do have a conflict of interest policy. Um, they will uh, would recuse themselves from any of the conversation when they're uh, looking at nominations. So we deal with that. We recognize that and don't let that get in the way. So after you submit your nomination, your work doesn't end because anybody who is nominated is invited and welcome to the breakfast. Number one thing you need to know is that if they're nominated, that individual gets one complimentary ticket for your nominee. Your nominee must RSVP to attend the event. And if you're interested in seating together, let us know there is an opportunity uh, when you make your reservation. Now, a question that's sometimes asked if you are nominating a group or a family, you know, more than one person under a certain category, you would receive one complimentary ticket. So work with us and if you need to, again, buy more tickets, sit together, etc. We will be communicating with your nominee and that's D done by both letter and email, letting them know that they have been nominated and letting them know a little bit about the process. Um, what you can do after February 1st is start thinking about um, uh, how you're going to promote this action, this activity. You can prepare a press release saying so-and-so has been nominated. You can start announcing it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram or whatever um, uh, social media platforms you use. You can do those things ahead of time. You can also prepare a press release should that person win so it's all ready to go that day, the, na the day of the breakfast. So, you know, you'll, the person wins, you come back to your, your office, you reread your draft of the press release and you can hit send that the person had won. So who should attend that April 27th event? Um, from the nominating organization, you as the nominator, of course, please come to support your nominee. Um, if your volunteer manager wants to attend, your executive director, board member, anybody can attend to support this person. And I think that kind of attention is really quite exciting. And um, it really, as, an, as a volunteer, it's like, wow, I didn't know I would get to share a table with, I never worked with the executive director, I only worked with the volunteer manager, and it's nice to have him or her there. And then for the nominee, and you can help guide the nominee to let them know that it's fine for other family members to attend, depending on who the person is, whether it's family members, their employer, perhaps some of the clients they've worked with, other volunteers like to see one of their favorites honored and they may want to be there in attendance. Uh, remember, we have we have about 500 people at this event. Um, for many years, I, I always worked the registration table and I cannot tell you how many people who come in, first of all, they're very nervous, very excited, but they're shocked at the, the magnitude of the event. They had no idea. It's a family-friendly event, um, lots of high-profile people, media coverage, all the members of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. It will be held at the Waterford in Springfield, same place as we have, I think, the past probably five years plus. Um, the event goes from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., 
but uh, doors open at 7.15 and please tell your nominee, be sure to come early. They have some items to pick up. There's a lot going on ahead of time as well. Our raffle uh, and just to, to find their place. Again, 500 people, um, that's about 50 tables. So sometimes it's a little difficult to find the table, but get, get everybody should get there on time and be ready. We'll, we start promptly at eight and we try our best to fish, finish promptly at 10. That concludes the prepared remarks. Any other questions? Um, I have one. The, um, you do ask for the residency of the nominee, and I know you said that they don't have to be a Fairfax County resident. I was just curious, does that carry any weight? No. It will not. It's about impact. What carries weight is the impact on the Fairfax community. I just know the Board of Supervisors is up there, and usually who's ever their um, representative or um, board member is very excited if it's from their area. Yes, they are. Okay. But remember, the Board of Supervisors are not part of the selection process. Okay. Is a copy of your presentation for this on the website as well, just for review if we want to take one more quick look at it as we're working on the nominations? Um, I'm not sure. I'm thinking yes. And the reason why this is the first time, the first year that we've done this, this webinar is being recorded and I have been instructed after today's presentation to make sure I share the link and the people who are in charge of promoting this, they know what to do. So. Um, I'm hoping yes. Um, let me just tell you, let me just give you Kristen Moore's name. Kristen is running the selection process and answers any questions from anybody in the community. So that's the person that, to ask as well. Okay, great, thank you. Anything else? No, I think, uh, that's, I think that's it, very Jessica, helpful. Thank Jessica, so any other things that I left out? That you want to add? No, nope. no, nope, not at all. You did wonderful, Susan. Thank you so much for taking the time to put this together and giving this very helpful presentation. My pleasure. Well, I appreciate you attending the, this webinar today, and we are going to wrap things up. And I'll tell you to go on and have a great day. And I wish you best of luck and wish you well in completing the nomination process. We appreciate your interest. Thank you very much. Thank, thank so much. you. Bye, Jessica. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.